The Edmonton Oilers will take on the Vancouver Canucks Wednesday for game one of their second round series. Let's dive in. You are Locked On Oilers, your daily podcast on the Edmonton Oilers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Monday edition of Locked On Oilers. I am your host, Nick Sararis. We are on to the third week of me hosting Locked On Oilers. I have yet to get in trouble. I have yet to give them a reason to get a different host, and we are thriving. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at Monopoly Go. Game off. We got to talk more about Monopoly Go. This fast pass game lets you team up with friends for tournaments to unlock awesome prizes like unique stickers for trading, cool playing pieces, and hilarious emojis for taunting your friends. Download Monopoly Go now free on Google Play or the Apple App Store game on. I'm recording this Sunday night. The Dallas Stars and Vegas Golden Knights game just ended in the last 5-10 minutes before I started recording to give a full scope of the Western Conference playoffs and have a more meaningful and well-rounded perspective of the playoffs at large to give you where the Oilers are at. So we're going to start with the narratives, the big picture ideas. We are going to have a crossover episode Tuesday or Wednesday, not sure yet when we are going to record that episode for you guys where we're going to get the Canucks perspective, but we're going to start out with the big picture. We're going to start out with the narratives for both the Canucks and the Oilers. We're going to dive into some of the stylistic things, some of the trends, some of the um, some of the pertin- pertinent statistics for the first round series going into round two. And then the third segment, we're going to touch on some of the... Um, more compelling matchups, some key players. We're not going to go too deep. We don't want to give away. We're not going to give away our talking points for when we do our crossover with Locked On Canucks. But to start out, the Oilers expected to be here. If you're listening to this episode, if you are a daily Locked On Oilers listener, if you are a dedicated Canu- a, a dedicated Oilers fan, don't worry. We're going to do the Canucks fan perspective as well because I feel it's very constructive when you look at these playoff series from the perspective of the opposite team. I know I got a little bit of feedback from Oilers fans about m- my perception of the series when i did the crossover episodes with eddie garcia about the kings i know i have been liable to look at things from the other team's perspective because i want to get the full scope i want to see all of the possible outcomes and try and have all the permutations in my head for gaming out how this series is going to go from an oilers perspective we're going into this series the canucks are just happy to be here that sounds slightly disrespectful. It feels a little bit un I don't want to say uncouth because that's not the right word, but it feels a little dismissive to say the Canucks are just happy to be in the second round of the NHL playoffs. But based on what they were looking like coming into the season, based on how their season has gone, based on the type of team they are, the talent they have, their injury situation. It really does feel like this is phase two or three of an Oilers contender window. And we're going to touch on some of the other plot lines going on. I'll pull up my notes now just to for the purposes of being efficient. The Canucks guys they have under contract going into next season are JT Miller, Elias Pettersson, Brock Besser, Connor Garland, Ilya Mikheyev, Pia Suter, Nils Hoaglander, Amon, Phil DiGiuseppe, Phil Vronick, Carson Soucy, Something Juleson, Demko, Tully Pilo, and Quinn Hughes. Okay. They're happy to be here. It feels a little bit dismissive to say another team that's in the second round of the playoffs is just happy to be here. but. We got to look at this with perspective. We got to look at this with the context of that team, where they are, how long guys have been on that team, how long the GM, how long the coaches have been in place. But if Thatcher Demko is not in that net for the Canucks, this is a very different playoff series. I think most Canucks fans, I think most Oilers fans would agree with me. 
if Thatcher Demko does not come back in this series, and from what we understand out here in the general public, Thatcher Demko is a maybe to return at some point in the NHL playoffs, being that these are the playoffs, we don't know what he has. He could have anything ranging from a thumbnail to a lacerated kidney, and we won't know. Being the playoffs are what they are, being that our understanding of injuries are what they are, I don't think the Canucks are in a position to bank on Demko coming back, which means from an Oilers perspective, which is what we care about here on Locked on Oilers, you have an advantage in that. I don't think Stuart Skinner was outstanding against the Kings. I thought he was really good in game three. I thought he was solid in game four, but he was okay in game five. The Oilers don't need Stuart Skinner to be a world beater. If they're playing Arthur Silovs, the Canucks, third goalie they only need Stuart skinner to be above average hell the oilers might be able to get away with Stuart skinner playing as an average goalie in the second round of the playoffs if they're playing against another team's third goalie but talking about the narratives the big picture there is significantly more pressure on the oilers than there is on the canucks i don't think anyone's going to argue with me on that I think the Canucks, they're in year one and a half of Rick Tockett as their head coach. Rick Tockett finished as a finalist for the um, Coach of the Year Award, and good for him. They've had a nice turnaround. We're going to talk about some of the key stats. We're going to dive into the under the hood numbers in the second segment where we'll touch on five and five. And the Canucks have been good defensively. I can't. I cannot knock the Canucks for their transformation. And yeah, some of it is just positive regression. They've had an okay season. They got some balances. Their power play was a little bit better than last year. The penalty kill, their goaltending, all of the uh, the volatile statistics that leave you, I don't want to say a little bit to be desired, but that let you know as a fan that we're not exactly thriving. We're winning. We're winning relatively convincingly, but it's partly because we're hot. And if that if that hot streak turns into a cold streak, we might be in trouble real quick. But the one last thing I want to leave you with in this first segment, as we talk about the narratives, the perspective, the Oilers expected to be here. I don't know if the Canucks and Patrick Alvin expected to be here in round two. I think they probably thought they'd be a playoff team. Depending on the matchup, maybe they're able to get through to the second round, but they got a favorable matchup. I would argue of all of the teams in the Western Conference, the Canucks got the most favorable matchup from a skill perspective. Yes, the Oilers were able to dispatch the Kings faster in the first round than the um, the Canucks were able to dispatch the Predators, but... I feel like from a talent perspective, if you would have given the Oilers the option, there's a real argument they probably would have preferred to play Nashville just based on the talent between the two teams, where it was in their lineups, at what positions. I think there's a real argument they would have preferred to play Nashville as opposed to playing the Kings in the first round. Either way, the Oilers didn't really break a sweat in that first round. It only went five games. I think there's a real argument the Oilers played between a C plus and a B minus, and the series wasn't ever rela- wasn't really ever close. And yeah, some of that is the special teams difference. Whenever you go an entire playoff series without conceding a power play goal against, the goal differentials are going to start to look a lot more favorable. And the Oilers did not control play at five on five against the Kings, but special teams, they were able to make a real discernible difference. And that's ultimately won that series. But coming up next on Locked On Oilers, we're going to dive into some of the facts of the regular season matchup, what these two teams looked like in the regular season and a whole lot more coming up next on Locked On Oilers. We've got your team covered every day. Passion, drive, and patient. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive 
eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride or die every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit is only available to U.S. customers. Thank you so much for making this Monday edition of Locked on Oilers a part of your day. I know it's Monday. You're tired. You don't want to be at work. You don't want to be in class, but you've taken the time to listen to today's episode. Thank you. You are why I do this. So, looking at this series from what we understand about these teams in the regular season, and no. The Canucks went 4-0 against the Oilers in the regular season. I don't want to say you entirely throw out the first three games these two teams matched up, but three of the four come before November 7th, before the coaching change. And I said this the other day, talking about Jay Woodcroft as far as taking maybe the Leafs job or the Devils job or the Blue Jackets job. There are a number of coaching jobs available in the NHL. and. I would not be surprised if Jay Woodcroft takes any of them. I don't think Jay Woodcroft was the reason the Oilers came out of the gate so poorly. I think it was a marriage of a number of factors. I think I think the snowball effect is very real. I think they came out of the gate a little bit cold. Connor McDavid dinged up out of the gate. I think when one player is interwoven to your team success as Connor McDavid is to the Oilers, if he's only at 75, 80%, I think you have real, I think you have real issues and they needed to get him healthy. One of the starts in there was a Jack Campbell start where he got pulled. And eventually, as we all know, Jack Campbell got sent down to the AHL, but I, I struggle to take anything particularly important from how these teams played in the regular season, being that they played three of the first four games within the first month. And the Oilers came out of the gate terribly. They couldn't buy a save. McDavid dinged up. Power play wasn't going yet. And yeah, that's on their ledger. If you go and look, those losses are against the Oilers. They're in that L column. But I don't find them particularly important. And Something to build off of that. One of the keys to a playoff series is styles. How do these teams like to play these games? And I've talked to a number of people. I've talked to Oilers people. I've talked to Canucks people. I've talked to casual hockey fans who don't have a horse in the race. And there is a real perception that going into this series because the Oilers are going to need rush opportunities, because they're going to need power play opportunities, this series is going to open up that the Canucks, who have been relatively defensively sound, looking over here at my notes, they were fourth in scoring chances against, they were fourth in goals against, they were sixth in expected goals against, and they were fifth in high danger chances against. With that understanding of how the Canucks like to play, what Rick Tockett has instilled in this team, what makes them a quality team, you're going to probably have to work a little bit harder for your offense. and. That's to be expected. I don't think that surprises anybody, whether it's someone on the Oilers or you listening to this podcast. I'm not going to say it was easy to create offense against the LA Kings in the first round or that the Oilers did a particularly good job. You've heard me over the last few days say, I feel the Oilers were somewhere between a C plus and a B minus in that first round series. And they were relatively in control, both in terms of the goals and the flow of play. Against the Canucks, 
it's going to be relatively similar. And the thing that's interesting about the Canucks in relation to the Oilers is they're built in relatively similar fashions. It's not a direct one-to-one. The Canucks' best player is not a forward. You would probably say Quinn Hughes is the Canucks' best player. If you wanted to argue Elias Pedersen, maybe, but not based on how that first-round series against Nashville went. I didn't feel like Pedersen was particularly impactful or noticeable. It's one series. I'm not ready to write him off entirely exact same way. And yes, I'm going to get the Leafs in here for a minute because they did lose to the Bruins last night. We're recording this episode of Lockdown Oilers Sunday night. Yeah, the Leafs lost to the Bruins last night. I didn't feel it was Mitch Marner's fault. I didn't feel it was John Tavares' fault. I didn't feel it was Willie Nylander's fault. I didn't feel like it was Austin Matthews' fault. Circling back to this Oilers series against the Canucks, it's close. Demko is an advantage. Will Demko come back? Probably not. So then, as an Oilers fan, you got to be thinking to yourself, okay. We've got the best player in the series in Connor McDavid. We've got the second best defenseman in this series in Evan Bouchard. If you're a real homer and you want to say Evan Bouchard is better than Quinn Hughes, you can't get me to agree with you. Their seasons, what they do for their respective teams in relation to both their defensive partner and the rest of their defense. Quinn Hughes was the best defenseman in hockey this regular season. He deserves to win the Norris Trophy. In a playoff series, can Evan Bouchard give you 70%, 75%, 80% of what Quinn Hughes did? Evan Bouchard, can he do that? Yeah. I think Evan Bouchard can be 75, 80% of what Quinn Hughes was, is, I should say, in terms of talent. I think he can do that. McDavid versus Elias Pedersen. You're taking that as an Oiler fan. Leon Dreisaitl versus JT Miller. It's close, but you're going to take Leon Dreisaitl, I think. Zach Hyman versus Brock Besser. Again, it's close, but you're going to take Zach Hyman based on the seasons they've had and the playoffs they've had. Okay, we're three guys into each lineup and the goalie, so four guys total. We're looking in an Oilers direction. I don't think you're going to find a significant argument from anybody acting rationally or arguing rationally that the Oilers are a deeper team than the Canucks. The Canucks are playing Elias Lindholm on the third line. They can drop Nils Hoaglander down to that third line. Depth-wise, I don't think there's much of an argument. I think the Canucks are in a clear advantage depth-wise, but as we're going to talk about in this third segment that's upcoming in a few minutes, you got to feel relatively good as an Oilers fan. And I talked about this on the episode that went out on Friday. This is the easiest path the Oilers have had in the McDavid era. That's not a knock on the Canucks. That's not a knock on any of the teams the Oilers have played in years past in the first round or in the second round. But this Canucks team down to their third goalie, that is a real advantage for the Oilers. and. I don't feel like we're making a big enough to do about it, but we will tackle that. We'll talk about some. We will talk about some series themes and a few other ideas coming up next on Locked On Oilers, where we've got your team covered every day. All right, game off. We got to pause here to talk more about Monopoly Go. I know what you're saying. Penalty, delay of game. You already talked about that. There's so much good stuff in this game. And Monopoly Go, you can team up with friends for time tournaments where you work together to build up each other's boards. The more you win together, the more awesome prizes you unlock. So much to get. Unique stickers. You can trade with friends to complete albums for big prizes. Cool new pieces to travel the boards with. Hilarious emojis to taunt your friends when you smash their buildings or heist their vaults. Plus, Monopoly Go feels new and exciting every day with constantly changing tournaments and challenges. A ton include their own unique mini games like Digging for Treasure or a robot pachinko machine. And there's always new timed events that help you win big, like massive multipliers for everything you win or rent frenzies. 
there's always something fun to discover in Monopoly Go. So get off the bench, go download it now. It is free on Google Play or the Apple App Store. Game on. Thank you so much for listening to today's edition of Locked on Oilers. We're in this final segment, and I won't go too in-depth in my ideas, my thoughts, my theories for the series at large, because I do want to save them for the preview we do with Locked on Canucks. But as an Oilers fan, you're listening to this episode of Locked on Oilers, and you have to feel reasonably confident about the Oilers based on how they played the Kings how the Canucks played the Predators, and that's your foundation. You only have your most recent information. I think you can throw out a good chunk of the regular season when we're talking about these two teams, their head-to-head matchups, especially being that three of them came before the coaching change from Jay Woodcroft to Chris Knobloch. So I don't think you want to take a whole lot from the regular season. I think if we're going to use the analogy I used before the Kings Oilers series and the Monstars are coming down and we're doing hockey instead of basketball this time, if you were to put all of the talent from the Oilers in one basketball and you were to put all of the talent from the Canucks in one basketball, I think it's close. I genuinely do. I don't think the Canucks high end talent is as good as the Oilers. I don't think anybody other than maybe Colorado's high-end talent is better than the Oilers. And that's not a knock on the Oilers. I just think McKinnon, Rantanen, and McCarr is that much better. Maybe uh, that much better. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see how close my fingers are together. But there's maybe there is enough space to fit maybe an eyelash between where I'm talking about in terms of the gap between the Canucks and the Oilers as far as skill, because I feel like the Canucks and Oilers are relatively evenly matched. If you parse this out, you go forward by forward, defenseman by defenseman, Bouchard, Quinn Hughes, Quinn Hughes, but Bouchard can be 80, 90% of Quinn Hughes, Philip Ronick, Matthias Ekholm. You're going to take Ekholm. Okay, let's go down to the second pair. You like Tyler Myers. I don't know if I like Tyler Myers. Okay. Do you like Cody Cece? I don't know if I like Cody Cece. That's one of the real funny things about this series uh, is the fact that you have real anti-analytics defensemen on both of these teams playing relatively important roles. You look at an Ian Cole, you look at a Philip Zadina, not a Philip Zadina, Philip Zadina, excuse me, Nikita Zadorov. I mixed up my Z last name. You gotta forgive me. I'm tired. It's been a long day. I was at the Rangers game earlier today, but the Oilers are in a position where they're going to have the best or second best player on the ice, 60, 70% of this series, you parse it out like that, it suddenly sounds both A, a lot more appealing, and B, a lot more enticing. I think the Oilers lucked out in this respect playing the Canucks because I think Nashville plays both a style and has the personnel. And I know Nashville is not a deep team, but we talk about a Ryan McDonough, Ryan O'Reilly, Philip Forsberg, Nikita, Go- not Nikita Goose. Oh my goodness. I forgot about, <laughs> I forgot about Gusev who was on the devils for a few years. I was thinking of Gus Nyquist. That is the forward I was thinking of, but those three, they traded for Anthony Bovillier. They had a nice season. Ryan McDonough was a very nice supporting piece to play with Roman Yossi. The Predators had a nice season. And the Canucks, I won't say they struggled against the Predators, but it was a lot harder than it needed to be. Some of that is the fact you're playing a UC Soros, you're playing against a Roman Yossi, and those guys are going to have an outsized influence on how individual games go, and you accumulate those individual games over the course of a series. I thought the Predators played about as well as they could with the circumstances they had. In all honesty, I thought the Predators were going to win game six. You could probably argue the Predators probably deserved to win that series, and 
I'm going to save my series prediction for the crossover episode of the show. We got till Wednesday. It's only Monday to talk about who, how I feel about this series based on how this, based on how I've talked on this episode. I think you have a reasonable understanding of how I feel. I think this is, if I were to, if I were to do the math, if I were to percentages it out, I would feel it's probably 60, 40 Oilers. I think, I think if the Oilers are going to win this series, these games are going to be up and down, high tempo, lots of goal. I think if the Oilers are going to win this series, it is going to be lots of up and down. I think it is going to be high scoring. I think it is going to be poor defense. I think it is going to be poor goaltending. And that might stress you out and make no bones about it. You don't want to be in the high scoring stressful playoff series. That is that is the most prone to fluky nonsense that will upset you as a hockey fan. If you go and look at these close nitty gritty series, more often than not, it is the players who are the guys you expect. You go look at that Bruins Leaf series. Yeah, it was pasta. Of course it was pasta. If the Bruins won that series, it was going to be pasta. It was going to be Marshawn. If the Leafs won that series, it was going to be Austin Matthews. It was going to be Willie Nylander. In this series, if the Oilers are going to beat the Canucks, it's going to be Connor McDavid. It's not going to be Elias Pettersson. And that'll be one of the things I'm very curious to see. How do the Oilers deal with the fact they don't have home ice in this series? How are they going to play their matchups? Is it going to be Vinny D'Arnais and Brett Kulak out there against Elias Lindholm? Okay. So who's going to be out there against Elias Pedersen and JT Miller and Brock Besser? And the Canucks have considerably more high-end depth. They have more overall depth. We're talking about Elias Lindholm versus Matthias Janmark or Ryan McLeod or Nuge or Warren Fogle. Whoever's playing that third line center, that guy against Elias Lindholm, that guy's going to be at a disadvantage. Elias Lindholm's not a third line center in today's NHL. I know Lindholm hasn't been overly impressive as a Canuck, but he's got more than enough talent. And if you play him against your team's third line or fourth line, he's going to be able to exercise an outsized influence on the overall game at large. I'm going to wrap it up here. I have a lot more thoughts on this series. If we do our crossover episode with our friends on Locked on Canucks tomorrow, you'll hear some of them. If not, you'll hear some of them. If we don't get this episode, this crossover episode with Lock on, Locked on Canucks out until Wednesday, until the day of game one, I will be assured to have more detailed and more interesting and engaging information for our intermediary. Maybe we shouldn't call it intermediary for our nerd preview of lot of the Oilers versus the Canucks. But that will just about do it for today's edition of Locked on Oilers. Make sure you are subscribed wherever you get your podcasts. If you're on Apple, if you're on Spotify, leave the show a five star. I, if you're watching on YouTube, you saw me throw up both hands and then realized that was ten. Five. Leave the show a five star review. If you are one of those people I just mentioned who's watching over on YouTube. Yeah, that's my face. The eye bags. They're doing okay. We haven't had a late night in a few days. I appreciate the Oilers wrapping up their series quickly. If the Canu if the Oilers keep going, their series against the Canucks goes long. The high bags are going to keep recessing further down my face, and I'm perfectly fine with that. My ideal outcome is in Oilers, Rangers, Stanley Cup Final. Hit the subscribe button. Hit that alarm button. Make sure you get a notification whenever a new episode of Locked on Oilers goes live. If we have a preview episode with our friends on Locked on Canucks for you guys tomorrow, I'll see you guys then. If it's just me, I will see you guys then. Until then, let's go Oilers.